Welcome, racers and fans, to the Racers News Network Live, presented by Straight Line Performance and Automotive and Scotty Wheels Racing. Your hosts, Chris and Pete, bring you the latest news and interviews in the world of sportsman drag racing, including bracket racing, association races, outlaw, and no time events. We are live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take it away, boys. Are you looking for comprehensive solutions for your performance and automotive needs? Straight Line Performance and Automotive is a full-service auto repair shop specializing in race car fabrication, electrical design, chassis setup, and alignment. Located in Hamden, Connecticut, they also specialize in aftermarket high-performance and chassis upgrades. Be sure to look them up on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash straightline, S-T-R number eight, L-I-N-E, performance, ampersand automotive, or give them a call at 203-415-5316. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another great edition of Racers News Network Live. Um, we are very proud, honored, and thrilled to say that the notification may have actually worked tonight. For those of you that don't know, I got bounced from Facebook. So you're seeing Tanya Barnes pop up. That's my wife. So it's coming live through her Facebook onto Racers News Network Live via Zoom. So if there's ever any questions, guys see that you know you're good um we we're supposed to have craig sullivan join us tonight but um there's been some communication issues and i doesn't appear as though craig will be joining us um but you never know we have some time he could pop up so with that being said we also have as always to my right pete Sanka, and then down there, Duran Settles, who didn't unmute himself. Yet. Who's still unmuted? Could you unmute him? We were doing good. Didn't you mute him, Chris? He has to unmute him. Here I am. I'm, I'm muted. I, was, I was muted solely because I was still working out my computer. Uh, you're, still, you're still attempting? Yeah, I got in, but uh, having figured out where the internet is <laughs> so i want to show you chris if you could see this oh you really can't but I, see is a, I can see a fuzzy screen the top thing says that we got notified that you guys are live all right so it worked that time something worked my phone even dinged and everything to let me know, I know mine did too. now when you come back to normal nothing will work again you know that right yeah. Probably it'll take it'll take another month to get me right, right. so but uh we got it figured out. I like your I like your text that was funny yeah. uh, <laughs> so like I said if you if you go on racist news network Facebook page and you see Tanya Barnes is live that is actually us um should only be like that for another two weeks hopefully we'll see See if I can behave myself. I'm actually looking at things. Should I share that or should I not? Share yeah, yeah, I know, right? You got to go back like three years to make sure you didn't piss anybody off. No, I know it. Well, actually, my wife got dinged for uh, she got a, she got a warning for something from like five years ago. Are you kidding me? No, no, not kidding at all. How have I never gotten in trouble? The only time uh, I got in trouble is when I said it, something. It, you know what? Now that you've said that, though, it's coming. I know you're not kidding. Yeah. So we have a couple of events to report on. That's what Jerron is working Absolutely. diligently on right yeah. now. And you notice I said your name right. You did say it right. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I couldn't say I couldn't say Carol Bell's husband's last name right. Missioni. <laughs> but I got that right. So that that's we decided a while back that that's what he's going to be known as now, Carol Bell's husband. That's even easier to say than Missioni. But um, for right now, we have the uh, 
results from the divisional event at Norwalk, which took place this past weekend. Um, the weekend before was a national event there. Um, there was a double, uh, don't really, not really a double up, but uh, top alcohol funny car, DJ Cox won at the national event and he won at the regional event this past weekend in top alcohol funny, thar- funny car. He won somewhere. representing. Yep, he, he won in he the won house. Again. And he took out a, a huge hitter in Sean Bellamer. Yep. Um, that was a that was huge for 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 the Cox team. Yeah, DJ's on a roll. Hopefully, it keeps up. Um, top alcohol dragster, the the ever so lovely, and she looks like she's about four feet tall. I've never seen her in person. Uh, Julia Natas in top alcohol dragster with the injected car. Uh, Peter Diagnolo in comp eliminator. Kent Hanley in super stock. And this one is not going to end well. In stock eliminator, John Mechaporachik. God, I hope that's right. If it Your is, Irish name. I think that's very close. <laughs> if it was, if it was on the money, can somebody let me know? And I give, I'm going to give myself bonus points if it is. <laughs> that was that was very close. I was I was impressed that you got that. Now. You were able to get that the first try, but Jerron gave you problems. Right. But it's okay. It's okay. Details, details, details. <laughs> Give me a break. I've known Matt for like three years, and I just finally learned this year how to say his name right, and I still can't do it. I just learned how to say his name right. Carol's husband. Carol's, Carol's husband. <laughs> Carol Bell's husband. With the same last name. Uh, Steve Yeager took home top sportsman. And a, a name we've all heard before. Bo Butner won in top dragster. So it sounds like Bo's doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, except for some pro stocking. Now, Jerron, I'm probably going to need you to explain this one to me because this is the first one, time I've seen this. But maybe it's been around and I just never paid attention to it. Joshua Van Skyver, Outlaw Dragster. What exactly was Outlaw Dragster at the at the divisional? If you know, you know, I did. I that was the first I heard of it. I think it's a D three D three thing that is similar to how PDRA splits up their like top eight qualifiers. Okay, like the really really fast cars. That's my only assumption because I this was the first I heard of it too. I can't even find uh, results on it. But uh, it was, I know it was eight or 16 of the top qualifiers because actually being a transplanted division seven racer, our uh, Jeff Conley was the number one qualifier in it. And he's a D seven guy that went out to Norwalk. Okay. And then Rumble Wars X8, Melanie Salimi. Any thoughts on that one? You know, that's Melanie runs a, uh, Pro mod most of the time, I believe. Yeah, so maybe it was like a quick aid or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. That's that's pretty funny that I could have gave you some info on Superstock and all these other classes, and you stumped me with the two classes that <laughs> you know nothing about. Yeah. <laughs> um, like, huh? Those actually are just made up. We just trying to screw you up. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we got the Disney Quick 183. What could you tell us about that, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a pretty fun class. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, three, three comments real quick from Rob Keister. First, Gerard looks like he has a fuzzy earring hanging from his ear with his earbud. <laughs> Second, it's ProMod United Group. And third, it just uh, he just says invited. Invited that must be for the uh outlaw dragster deal, must be an invited situation, yeah, or the rumble wars, or yeah, the pro mod deal, whatever. Yeah, yeah I got you. So, now, um, I'm sure you're not finished, but um, you skipped over like super comp, super gas, super street, all those beautiful. No, I'm, the, I, that, I'm the dot 90 job. guy, so slow your roll. Forgot right? that's Pete's job, okay, okay. But hey, but before we move on to that, can we go back to um. 
super stock and like Ken Hanley has been on a, a tear this year. Two finals at, at Atlanta, won one of them, yeah. and now won another divisional here in, in Norwalk. Um, and took out Joe Santangelo. I mean that's and that was a killer final, double oh six to Santangelo twelve. I mean those are two two of the best in the business right there in Superstar. You know anything about racing? You've heard those names, that's for sure. Absolutely, really? absolutely. Now, I mean, I mean, semifinals. I mean, uh, Ken Haley yeah. took out Bob Letelier. I think that's how you pronounce that. I know, I know, it's Bob Let Letelier. Letelier. <laughs> that one I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's one of those uh, Connecticut Hampshire guys. <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything north of New York is Maine. It's just it's Maine, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just That's you, why eat, I you, eat, to the left. you eat clam, you eat clam chowder, and you root for the Bills or something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, or the Giants or the Eagles or I don't know. Like <laughs> yeah, that. whatever. <laughs> I do. I see my earring. Now. I'm about to do something about my earring. I don't know. You look hot. You're you're making it cool. I got. I, got it. I appreciate it. He's Thanks, a fashion, sir. He's not a fashion felony. He's a fashion friend. So could I ask you, Jerome, where are you getting all this extra info that we couldn't find at all today? Or did they just uh, put the update? I think they just put it on Drag Race Central. Okay. So to the to the millions and millions of viewers, we try and get our show planned out like midday. Usually I take lunchtime on Monday to look stuff up and figure stuff out. And we are so limited with the info that we're getting. For example, the only info I have for the dot 90 guys is winners. Uh, and you know, from hearing me in previous weeks, I like to tell you who they ran, what their lights are, margin of victory, um, how many wallies they've won in their career. Uh, and, and we were absolutely handcuffed all day today uh, to the point where, I'm ready to move the show to Wednesday just so that we could have the info. Yeah. What do you got? Mate, I'll make you a deal. Start with Super Street, and I'll give you the I'll give you the numbers after you read it. I have, yeah, I have them here up on the. Oh, you do. Too. All right, go ahead, John. Yeah. And and to and to, to, to you know go what he said. They literally just put it up like five minutes ago. Yeah, because I mean we look. We even I even looked when I got home. I got home at five thirty, uh, and while I was eating dinner, I logged on to Drag Race Central and had nothing more than what I have already. So. Yep. Bear with us, and uh, yeah. All right, so you want to start with Super Street? I can tell you that Ben Hate, H-A-I-G-H-T, Hate, Height, whatever. Congratulations, you won. That's all I know. <laughs> well, <it> was... <laughs> Thank you. Ben, Thank you was, much. ben was stellar in the final. Ben was 007 dead three Woo. and took out Raymond Miller, who was 11 out 3,000. So it was, it was, it was a good final. Um, Is that uh, any relation to Ray Miller drag strip? I don't, I don't think so. No, I think it's a different. I think that's Ray Miller, to ha Raymond Miller that has a Monza, I believe. Okay. All right. For uh, Super Gas, um, a man that really needs no introduction. Uh, Luke Bokaki took the uh, took the trophy home, and Jaron is going to elaborate on it for me. <laughs> uh, Luke, Luke took, took out, out Nathan Vrooman, uh, who was 16 dead nine, but Luke was 008 one over with the zero. So that was 10 pack to, uh, I'm sorry, 10 under. 18, 18 pack to 18. something. Yeah, <laughs> I was looking at the wrong numbers. I'm sorry. I was <laughs> But, uh, you yeah, know, Luke took out a good field, took out uh, Jacob Elrod, Ray Connolly, Locke. Like, he had, he, had a, he, had a, he had a tough day. So uh, Ray Connolly as was... in David Connolly's father, right? Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. And Luke's light was 16, 8, 2, 14, 12, and 14. That's uh, what was... we call a tight group. He was on the tree for sure, yeah. But it's. It's Luke, so you don't expect anything uh, right, more right, than that. Right. But uh, yeah. seventh thou and the seventh thou stripe in the finish line, in the in the final. So, and what what mile an hour roughly for Luke? He, he went one fifty nine, which I'm going to say is probably down. At 10 least 15. ten, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
I don't think he's a 170 mile an hour player, but I know he's is the car. He should be mid mid 160s. So high 160s. Seven thousandths of a second at 165 is 10 inches. It was 20 inches. It says. 20 inches. Okay. 20 inches. Yep. Yeah, and I'm sure. It looks like Nathan may have been flat out. He went 162 to go dead nine. Um, so I don't think uh, Nathan, you know, fed him fed him anything. Right, so right. Luke did a good job just uh, backing into him, staying out in front. Very nice, very nice. And uh, for the final dot ninety class for Ohio, uh, the best super class ever. ever. <laughs> Only when you're in it, pal. <laughs> uh, John Davis took home the trophy in Super Cup, eight ninety. Another good final. John Davis kind of shut off. He was 004 dead five. Wow. Nine thousand. And he took yeah, he took out Tyler Bohannon. Tyler was sixteen, a good two with an eight, but Tyler definitely uh jumped on uh, jumped on the binders and got out of there. He was he only went 150. I know Tyler's car was a lot faster than that. So he just saw that uh he couldn't couldn't get around Davis and bailed out and hoped that Davis went under and he missed by Five thousand. Wow. But uh, Davis Davis took out Donnie Laboos in the semis. It was double O two on Laboos. Took out T, uh, took out Steve Eckert the round before that. The Patascula Flash and to panic Rusty Cook. He had a he he went through a, a another uh, good run of, of people. And Tyler uh, Tyler's a great racer too. Took out Larry Bernhausen, Dave Delim, Ray Connolly, Heitzman. Uh, they both had to work a ton to get to that final, which, yep. you know, being, being biased, super comp stuff. So. Excellent. And I just got a comment from Rob Keister uh, saying, don't worry, he'll have all the results from his race from the media by Sunday. So we'll be able to give you a good report, Rob. I like it. I like it. I believe Chris is working on a guest. Uh, so he's not talking to himself there. He's actually trying to accomplish something. <laughs> <laughs> we we definitely want to, uh, Jerron and I have talked about it. We've talked about it with Chris too. We definitely want to get more into the details of the races, um, especially the finals and the road that got him there. But again, we're, we're a little handcuffed as to the info. Uh, obviously, when there's a D1 race and one of us are attending, uh, it's a lot easier to get the info, or in Jerron's case, a D12 or whatever friggin' division you run. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot easier to get the info, but when they have a race over in D3 and none of us are fortunate enough to be there, we're at the mercy of the people that are reporting. And as you can see by what we're going through right now, it's um, not the easiest thing in the world. Chris, back yeah. to you. <laughs> Continue talking. I am I'm got a guest line up and I will let you know who it is and just getting the information sent to her as we speak. Roger that. Let's go back to uh Top Bar Call Dragster. Um that was an all female final as Chris said, Julie Natas took out Jasmine Salinas. And Jasmine, as most know, had that crazy crash at Gainesville. Right. And uh, has bounced back with a new car and everything and, and is running good. I mean, she, she struggled there in, in, uh, in the, in the semis, I think they had like maybe a, 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 a pedal fest, but she qualified number five and with a 526 stepped up to 22, the first round to beat Matt Sackman. And then uh, Julie Natas, who is basically in uh, a team car to the Meyer sisters uh, is just top notch equipment, obviously. Uh, she was number two qualifier with a 519. I think, uh, yeah, Dwayne Shields was number one. She took out him first round. And uh, then Robin beat Robin Samson in the, in the semis uh, with a 535. But what, uh, like Jasmine, could you see what happened with Karen Stalba? Uh, no, I don't see who beat her, but I can go check real quick and see. Um, let's see. She's local to us, and I know she. Absolutely. I thought she qualified number one because she had a nasty pass. I think um, she did, yeah. I know, and I know, like at the national, she took out 
Jackie, Jackie first or second round. She lost in the final at the Nationals, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I know at one point she was number one with a 516 at 280. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of surprised that you hear to hear you say Dwayne Shields was number one because I thought for sure that was going to carry her. No, no, I, I thought. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, that wasn't. Let me let me check unless they had it posted wrong. But yeah, they have him as number one. Let's see. Uh, Elimination. So no, no. So now they have Karen as number one. Yeah, five sixteen one. She had to run Brandon uh, Greco, and I can't find the second round of elimination. Uh, they don't have that posted. Oh wait a minute. Here it is. No, that's twenty four. Yeah, that. Uh, here you go. Okay. All right. So looks like. Karen got beat on a whole shot. Brandon was, yeah, Brandon was 11 on the tree. Oh my God. Which, which is unheard of. Went 539, 268 to beat her 528, 279. Karen was 141 on the tree. She laid off a little bit. And, now, uh, let me ask you a question. You've never driven an alcohol car, but you've driven some fast dragsters, and I know that you follow the alcohol scene pretty good. Is it even possible to cut an 11 light if you see the trick? You know, I'm pretty sure Brandon, if he's in his normal car, is in a in an, uh, blown alcohol car, Yeah, which reacts, yeah. They, they react a lot faster than the, the injected the car. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and 11, he might have guessed on that, but Brandon's right. a great driver. I can't take that away from him. Yeah. Um, but, you know, leave with, with the clutch pedal like they do, that's, it's very well possible. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah, so and I believe he was the only – yeah, he was the only blown car. Like I said, if that's the same car he drives most of the year, he was the only blown car in the field. And it was a pretty quick first round. Jasmine won with a 522. Robin won with a 531. Took out Vic Steele's 540. And Julie Natas. Julie was 40 first round uh, to go 528 to beat out uh, Dwayne Shields, who smoked the tire. Uh, I believe Chris is trying to get our attention here for a sec. Okay. okay. What you got? All right. So I managed to reach out to one of our super comp racers at Lebanon Valley Dragway. Everybody knows her. And of course, I'm talking about the very quiet, very subdued dragster girl, Jasmine Waiter. Hi. Hi. Hi, am I on? I can't hear anything. I th yes, yeah. you are, and I think that's the most inappropriate introduction ever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Because <laughs> there is nothing subdued about this girl, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure I saw her trying to tackle a golf cart at the Divisional. Probably. <laughs> How you doing, Hello, Jasmine? Good, how are you? Very good, very good. Now, Jerron, I don't know if you know Jasmine, and Jasmine, I don't know if you know Jerron, but Jerron's a, a, a dot ninety flash top dragster guy. Um, runs out, out west, he's based out of Florida. So he's hanging out with us tonight. But I've been talking to you, I wanted to do dragster, only two dragsters, and a one door guy. So dragster versus door guy. In other words, we're probably going to get punched in the head. <laughs> I've driven pipe racks before. It's no big deal. <laughs> um, Jasmine. Yes. I got to tell you, very impressed with your helmet. <laughs> Thank you. It came out great. Uh, very, very impressed. I know you don't do it for a living. Um, when we were up at the divisional, you were talking about, yeah, I'm going to break out the airbrush. I haven't done it in a while. And I'm thinking it's going to look like stick figure cartoons <laughs> at best. And you posted pictures of it. I was like, all right, Gerard never pisses me off. I know who I'm calling. <laughs> yeah, you know, my, my, my dad did body, he's done body work for, I think, 35 years. He just, Is that me. right? I just started doing it. <laughs> it's good. It looks really good. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Now I want to see it. I'm just like dying to see it now. I'm telling you, it's good. <laughs> 
Um, I got to see if I could pull up a picture. Is it on your Facebook page? Um, I'm pretty sure. I think it's still on the, on the post. All right. Let me see if I can find this here. So, Josh, yeah, how long have you been racing? How long have you been racing the big car? Or the drag racing The big car. Big car. This is my third full. Third full year? Yeah. Now, what did you raise for the, before you got in the big car? Were you running the junior? Yeah, I was in the junior, and then I also popped in my dad in Dakota for a while. Um, before, Before I have to drive. Oh, Lori Butler says hi, Jasmine. What was that? Lori Butler says hi, Jasmine. Hello. So, <laughs> so like I said, well, we lost. I think Jerron might be doing some homework or something. So, all right. So, Pete, more yes, cars versus dragsters. Let's go. Um. I'll say dragster for big money races because of their super ultra consistency. Uh, door cars, if you want to get the chicks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's, it's it, obviously it's a lot easier for a door car to have a personality where dragsters tend to, I mean, you, you could see beautiful paint jobs. Uh, you could see, you know, chrome and, and wheels painted and dashboards painted. But if you were walking through a car show and you had 50 door cars and 50 dragsters, I think people would be more entertained by the door cars strictly because of different shapes and sizes and all that stuff where dragsters are all pretty much the same. I know Jerron's going to argue with me here. I could see it in his eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Jerron, you're up. Dragsters versus door cars. I, I kind of knew where you were going to go, but it's not me. Well, no. <laughs> Here's my deal with that. Like, if you have a purpose built door car, you know, like an X Pro Star car, a top sportsman car, it's going to be just as good as a dragster. You know, a lot of times you see the guys that have like a back ass 68 Camaro that's overpowered. That's not going to be consistent like a dragster or whatever. So, you know, I think if you have a prepared car, it doesn't matter if it's a store car dragster. I mean, Scotty Richardson's proven that you can win in anything. Edmund, you know, those guys, Luke Bukaki. I think it just depends on the car. I mean, if, if, if you have an old hardtail dragster that won't go down the right track, then it's just as bad as a, you know, four foot wheel standing Camaro that won't go straight. I, the first time I ever drove a dragster, now I had my Vega, it wasn't a chassis car at the time, it was only a back half car, short wheelbase car, I don't have to tell you what that means. The first time I ever drove a dragster, when I got out of it, the first thing that popped into my mind was, this is the first time I drove a car that was built for what I was doing as opposed to taking something that wasn't built for racing and making it a race car. That, that was the first impression that I had the first time I drove one. Uh, and then I wound up owning one and 750 in a dragster is yawning and 850 in a door car. Again, I'm not talking an ex Warren Johnson car, but you know, you take a, a, regular car and you back half it even if you do a really good job just by wheelbase alone you're yep. going to have a much smoother calmer ride in a dragster than you are in a dark car yep. Yep. yeah yeah that's and that's really i mean i know guys that have jumped out of dragsters and jumped into uh, an x pro stock you know dxp or cobalt going six nine is like man this thing was more right. boring than the dragster right 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 yep you know yep. So, so that's, that's really, you know, the, the, the argument about the store car drives are just, just it's what, what you're trying, you're trying to, do to do with it. All right. So I'm going to make you compare apples to apples right now. Okay. Same money spent, same technology, same everything, competitiveness. Someone offers you a ride in top sportsman or top dragster. Which one are you jumping in? Uh, top dragster just because it's faster. 
I just said apples to apples. Oh, well, apples to oh, apples? Yeah. Jasmine, did I speak a foreign language here? Help me out. I'm sorry, I wasn't I thinking. Thing. You know, I'm thinking, thinking about, about, you know, the, the bumps that are already. No, I mean, let's, let's say I qualify, it. let's say 32-car right, 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 right. field, you got two cars that qualify 10th. Yeah. yeah. Both pretty cars, both nice, you know, good equipment. What are you jumping? That is, that tough. is tough. It's, it's it is, is hard to beat a really, really nice, nice, beautiful door car. It's it's, it's, it's tough, tough because he knows he should say dragster, but it's hard <laughs> to say door car. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> no, it's just uh, I just I don't know. I, I I like that wheelbase, and and to me, I've been fairly fast in in a dragster. You know, I haven't been low sixes, but I've been you know good in the sixes. But it just um. Nothing beats a fast tractor ride, too. I, you know, I haven't been that fast in door car, so maybe it is just as exciting. But you just don't hear, like, like everybody I know that, that's like 650, 640 door car is like, yeah, it's fun, but I don't know. It's nothing like a dragster wheel standing. I don't know. It's just kind of cool. All right, Jeff, it's your turn. Speak. <laughs> um, I personally think, I don't know, because I've been in a door car now. I've been in Pete Diamond's pickup truck his super street truck yep. and i think it's super cool because like in a dragster like yeah my dragster like lifts the wheels up but like i did a wheelie in his truck and i think it's like super cool but like then again i look at it and i'm like would i want to run this every single weekend probably not like even judging the stripe in like a truck compared to a dragster i'm just like i'd rather be in a dragster at that point and it is a lot smoother <laughs> how many years have you been competing in a dragster the three full years I've been in the big drag, so I've been three years. So nice, nice, nice. And do you race super comp anywhere else but the divisional? Um, not usually. Um, me and my dad just have been talking about it. we want to start traveling with like division one, going to all the other tracks. New media is coming up. Got a couple weeks. No, I don't know if we're gonna make it to New Media. Maybe you the next a, one. We got a big train going down there. You should be in it. I know. I would like to. I just don't know if I can do all the work and everything. Right. <laughs> hey, Pete. Let me just jump in here. I think uh, to to add more about what kind of what Jasmine said is like. Also, it seems like it's so much easier if you need need to do any work with the director too. You know, it's, it, you need a crew of people to take the front end off. You know, of a door car. I think once you've once you've raced tractors for a while, you kind of get used to that part of it. Easy to get in. Right. You know, easy to work on, that sort of thing. Whereas a door car is kind of cool, like you said, the first few times, but you're like, man, do I want to do this all the time? You know? Yeah. I could, and, I could tell you that in having both, there was nothing easier to work on than a dragster. It was yeah. nice. Like wish now in five minutes. <laughs> and, and I even had, I had my shop and I figured out how to put my dragster on my lift. And I mean, I changed the oil with the car in the air and I it took my oil pan off. And yeah, I mean, it was just nothing easier to work on than a dragster. Couldn't close and, my garage door because the front end was sticking out. But <laughs> other than that, it was perfect. <laughs> but I know, you know, for me, I've literally traveled 10 or 12 hours by myself and raced a dragster all weekend. It's pretty hard to, to race a top sportsman style car by yourself. Like right. you're not going to go to the track by yourself. Yep. So that's that's one of the advantages to a dragster. You really don't need any help, right? So, Jazz, have you ever tried top dragster? And if you haven't, do you want to at some point in time? I would love to run top dragster, but <laughs> the pocket isn't big enough. <laughs> Maybe if I get some more sponsors, that'd be cool. That's definitely the class I would like to be in. But like, there's a whole other aspect. Is I like that index racing. Like, I like everyone being at the 890 mark and forced like who's who's the better driver who can put together the better package not only like i don't know it's just a different kind of race i don't know it's when, when, people, like the index racing. when people ask me what my attraction is to the dot 90 stuff it's it's like a science experiment it's, exactly it's figuring out so many things like You'd be surprised how many people think that if you're trying to run 890 and your car runs 790 flat out, you just put a second in the timer and ta-da, no, imagine no it happens. People don't understand cruise RPM, how the weather affects stuff. I mean, 
I notice now with my car, I drop it down to an idle now for the cruise. Mm -hmm. And I noticed at Lebanon Valley that one day the track was exceptionally stickier than the day before. And my 60 foot time slowed down because I'm coming almost to a stop. It's so sticky. My yeah. car actually, I saw it in the drive shaft counter that my car actually went slower because there was so much more rolling resistance. And you try to explain that to the average person and they're like, yeah. you, mean you don't just floor it and go. And it's like, no, it's not like that. It's, it's, I love the science experiment aspect of it. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. That's one thing for me is like with the super comp racing, it's a lot of people are going to cringe when they say this. I have a weather station and I have never looked at it. Not once. Really? I don't know how to use it. I can use computers. I can use phones. I cannot use that stupid weather station. Yeah. So, so I'm just like, hmm, feels like five degrees warmer. Let me get uh, a couple yep. numbers out. It happened. Literally, I'm not even kidding. Like the whole divisional, like when I came over to you and I was like, how do you think it feels? And you're like, I don't know the weather station. I'm like, I don't even know how to look at this thing. <laughs> Oh, that's freaking great. That's I've great. never used one, ever. Not even, so you don't even use it for bracket racing? No. Good for you. I know third round, my car speeds up no matter what, and that's what I go with. Wow, good for you. Hey, yeah. I, the, the races I've done my best at was when my data logger wasn't working and I was having issues with my weather station and I'd go out and win. And it's like... Yeah, I, I remember I, I had my data logger broke. No, I take that back. My weather station broke when I was borrowing a car and I had to wing it and I wound up winning English town. And then the very next year, my data logger broke in my car. And I remember my son saying to me, the last time something broke, you did good. So don't sweat it. I was pissed. I'm like, I can't go racing without it. This sucks, you know? <laughs> And it's not that I can't do it without it, but I hate owning the technology and not being able to use it. That's what drives me crazy. Um, and sure enough, I went out and I won ACA with no data logger. <laughs> and it was like, that I got to watch my son now whenever I go racing. He like grabs a handful of wires and wants to rip them out of my car. Pick <laughs> something. But yeah, it's it's funny. You could It could help you or it could get you in over your head too, which is probably what it does to me. But. <laughs> <clears throat> Chris, what do you got going on over there? You look like a mad scientist. Kind of. I'm, I'm juggling. Our, our uh, original guest has been found. <laughs> oh, no kidding. <laughs> yes. Um, no, no. Could, you know, you guys keep going. I mean, oh, um, now that you said you want to do some divisional stuff, what's the plan? Start more next year or maybe catch something this year? I think we're going to do a couple. I think we want, um, I think dad wants to go to Maple Grove. Okay. Um, so, I mean, whatever he can get off for, I can probably convince my boss to let me off for. So right. whatever he says, I'm ready. And then Epic would probably be a, a easier one for you to go to as far as traveling goes. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they're all, none of them are really that far, which is kind of nice. Where are you located? Where are you based out of? Um, my dad's out of Kingston, New York, and then I live in Albany, like 20 minutes from the track. So. Oh, nice, nice. Good. good, good, good. And how do you feel about, so this is a complete culture shock for you because you're, you know, on any given Sunday, you could go anywhere from, you know, two time trials in the first round to going six rounds and winning the race. You could be doing, you know, nine, ten laps in one day to yeah. – two laps and then you put it in a box and you hang out and then maybe another lap the next day. And then it's all gun ho on Saturday or on Sunday. How, uh, how do you adjust to that going from one extreme to the other? I think I like it more just cause it is, I feel like you're having, it's more relaxed, but at the same point, I'm very antsy. And right. like, you know, that. like I was running around talking to everyone cause I was so bored. Yep. Yep. And, like, on a Sunday, I just, like, a normal point Sunday, I feel like I'm just sitting there. You wait for one round. You come back. You put gas in your car. You wait for the next round. It's just, right. like, waiting. Right, right. But it's, like, short wait. And then on divisional races, I feel like I'm there for, like, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
and I feel like I don't do anything Friday, Saturday, right. like nothing. Sunday, it's like, oh, you're racing. It's just random. I like it. <clears throat> what you got, Christopher? How many provisionals events have you run total? Yes. In the big car, this is that was my third. And then, all super comp. yep, all super comp. And then I ran the junior draftster divisionals, um, I think for two or three years. And that's it. <laughs> Were you more nervous at your first divisional event in the junior or in the big dragster? Definitely or in the junior. Definitely in the junior? Yeah. Because, like, for juniors, um, I started juniors pretty late. I think I was 12 or 13. Everyone else started when they were eight. And I had not gotten one round win yet at all in the junior. And I went to my first junior, my first my first junior divisional, my first year in juniors. And I ended up winning the consolation race. And that was my first one ever at Numidia. Very cool. Yeah. Hi, I'm back, by the way. Oh, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, too, uh, basically, I just got interrupted, but uh, just to kind of uh, go back to what you were, when uh, Pete was talking about how difficult Supercomp is, to kind of, in a nutshell, when uh, in a bracket, top tracks or whatever, those classes, if the air, the track, whatever changes, you just change the dial in. What I love about the dot 90 races is you have to change the car. Mm-hmm. you know so that's that's the the complicated factor that why i like it and why it's more like you said a, a science project because right. you can't just you know if the if the weather picks up 800 well now you got to slow the car down 800 you don't just dial down 800 so that's that's the challenge i love about it that i have yet to conquer and what <laughs> again on the, NH, go, on the nhri side yeah, sorry. going back to what i said originally if you run your weather and you see it's 200 slower, you don't just take 200 out of your time. Right, exactly. And then yeah, people yeah. don't under, people are like, right. you have a ratio. Yeah, and what do you mean it changes when your stop RPM changes? And it yep. people just don't, yeah. you know. The, the, big, the biggest thing is, you know, that, that, you know, coming from a bracket race background, what we always said, you can take the baddest bracket car on the planet, throw a throttle stop on it and ruin it. Right. Right. Because it will not repeat to save its life. <laughs> yep. Yep. That it just it's amazing what that throttle stop does to the car that, you know, without it, you know, it'll just print tickets and you gotta work on it to get it to print tickets with a throttle stop. And and there ain't many people that can make a car print tickets on a throttle stop. Amen. So Jazz, that means but, you gotta come up to at least New England this year. I think I'm going to. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Good choice. So, I've never raced in New England. I heard a lot of people like it. A lot of people don't. I think that's every track in the country. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, Jasmine. Um. So uh, you mentioned something about body, body and paint. You know, of course, my, yeah. my tail started. My tail started wagging. I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> my dad taught me a lot. He's very, very good. He doesn't like to put himself out there, but <laughs> he knows yeah, so his stuff. I just went through your whole Facebook and I could not find a picture of your helmet. So I told um, you. It's on the post that of my helmet and you commented on it. And I. I know. Like, I can't find it. I don't. I and I'm probably going to get the Creeper of the Year award for checking out all your stuff. But here, I I'll post it, it right now so you can go see it. Okay. So, Jasmine, do you, do you, uh, do you work at the shop? yourself no um my dad made me promise to him when I was younger to because I wanted to paint cars like that's what I wanted to do growing up and my dad made me promise to him not to take on that career because of like all this stuff that he went through like just it's not something that he wanted me to be in for the rest of my life because it is a hard career if you don't like work for a very big company because working for yourself, owning your own body shop, especially in New York, it's nearly impossible to really make that money. It's just a hard business to be in. So, because he wow. sold his shop in 99, the year I was born, because it was, he was doing favors for friends and 
not getting paid. And he just ruined his shop by doing all that stuff. So he just told me never be in that business, get a job with good benefits and a retirement. <laughs> so I work for Albany medical center now. That's cool. I, I wish I would have listened to your dad back then too. <laughs> <laughs> now he's stuck. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't get out of it now, but yeah, no, that's cool. So, so, but, but you painted your own helmet. Yeah. Me and him did it. Um, we actually did it twice because the first time I didn't like it. <laughs> That's cool. No, I just wonder. Yeah. I'd be happy I'd be to show you a picture of it, but I can't. I know. Yeah, I know. I was I was waiting for Pete. <laughs> Freaking Pete, leave it. Leave it to the. To I'm the trying, dude. I'm creeping her page. I'm doing everything right. I can. It's on my feed. I just posted it. All right. Oh, there it is. I got it now. Got uh, it. You got, got it, Chris. Hold it up. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's show Jerome what a real helmet looks like. Ah, that's what I'm dying to see. Oh, yeah. boy. It looks better with the shield on. It looked funny in the video. Yeah, so you can't see the detail on it, though. Yeah. I don't have a picture. Oh, there of it. you go. There you go. You can see some of that. I can't see it. Well, I can't, I, we're, I'm on the wrong page. Where am I? You looking at Chris? No, I don't. Uh, let's see. Well, look at Chris, you knucklehead. What did I do? Uh, where's Chris? Oh, there's Chris. Hold okay. on. You would think we've done this before. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty red and purple. I like it. Yep, it's pink. It's um fuchsia pink, oh, pink purple, purple. and that's the uh, new style plum crazy purple. It's a nice smooth fade too. That's, that's good. Well, you should you should do more helmets. You should you should uh, just do it on the side. Yeah, a lot, um, actually, a couple of dirt track drivers from Lima Valley have been asking me, and then a couple of drag racers have been asking me to do it. Um, I'm thinking about it. I mean, I like doing it. It's just time. It'd be it have to be over the winter. I don't have the time in the summer. Cool. Yeah, that's, well, that's most of the time. Go ahead. We have we have our guest here. You are welcome to stay and talk with Craig if you'd like to, but if you have to bolt and have other things to do, obviously we'll understand. So it's up to, it's up to you, kiddo. I'll hang out. I'm home alone. Right. <laughs> so, Jerron, take it over, my friend. Um, there's this guy that has a car and he's from some place in the country and he's won a few races yeah bring him bring him on no i'm just kidding now <laughs> craig sullivan basically has probably the most notable pro mod car that's ever existed and uh it's 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 so famous it has its own video game like you know it's it's been uh, uh replicated on the video game so um Let's get him on here, and he's he's only about forty five minutes late. So let's go ahead and get him on here and uh, find out some more about Craig Max Sullivan. What did I do, Pete? Uh he's he's muted. Uh, okay. <laughs> Craig, uh, lower left hand corner of your screen, you should be able to see video and and microphone. There you go. There we go. Non-technical guests. Get the grant. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John. He How are you, buddy? Uh, just healing up from uh, Fort July. We were down in Madison at uh, Boat Regatta. So convertible gotcha. down all day and coming back, I was wiped out. I get it. I get it. So what I I, just, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit if you uh about the new car i know you haven't really re revealed it yet but uh can you kind of give us a little bit of insight on what it's going to be you know mainly because your old car like i said was so so popular i mean arguably the most popular pro mod car probably ever built especially when you debuted it at pri i mean it pretty much floored everybody at pri so can you talk about the new car any? yeah yeah uh we uh we started out um billy lieber to a gentleman up there in New York that built uh, fiberglass kit cars. And uh, he had a 4950 Ford uh, kit car that he built. So I bought a body from him. I re-chopped the roof, uh, reset the back glass in it, uh, 
made some changes to it. And Larry Jeffers race cars uh, used it for a buck, uh, made a mold, and we now have carbon fiber 49 mercury uh, bodies available. Um, it, uh, it's been quite a deal. We've been two years building this car at Larry's. <clears throat> Everything was done in-house as far as the carbon with Larry. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's come out awesome. We uh, went to go test, had uh, Michael Bunton wire it. Uh, I went down to Savannah and helped him with it. I left Savannah to go to Mentor's. Uh, Mentor got it set up. We went to Gallup and the car caught on fire on the second hit. Uh, oh, no. We had, we had a spark plug fail, broke in two. And when it comes out of the hole, I mean, it is worse than a flamethrower. Uh, it actually burnt the front clip off of it, uh, burnt the windshield. So uh, it is actually, uh, Tommy just pulled in at uh, Larry Jeffers uh, 30 minutes ago. So they're going to work to get two front ends fitted to it. Um, then it will come back. And then the guys at Kryptonite Customs in Tulsa will be back on Monday to uh, wrap the front end and the roof and the hood or the deck. Um, <clears throat> Kryptonite Customs wrapped it just like they did the barn burner. Um, I think we hit it out of the park with it. It's uh, got a Cholo theme to it. And uh, it, uh, I really think we're going to see something pretty awesome out of it. Um, I've got uh, Brent Sansui, the famous mouth from uh, St. Louis, has uh, launched its own Facebook page, El Merrill Merrill. And uh, people can kind of follow along on it and Craig Sullivan Motorsports. Uh, we're still using our in house engine program. Um, we're using uh, Mark Mickey's converters and, and uh, transmissions. So we expect to be a, a top half qualifier and win some more races this year. That's cool. That's cool. It's good to hear. Now, talking about that, we, you know, we were, uh, before you came over, we were talking about drags for door car. You ran top dragster for many years, and, and you've driven everything, nitrous cars, turbo cars, blower cars. What's, what's kind of your favorite dragster or door car? I don't know. It, it's, it's a favorite for a season, I think. Um, I really miss my top dragster friends and uh, miss driving. Uh, slutty and sexy that we had in our American cars uh they they were a lot of fun <clears throat> but uh and them slowing down top drags through to 610 really sure. I, it, uh, but uh you know there's there's some people there that really took advantage of some rules or didn't need to be racing i mean it's one thing to go 599 with a seven or 598 with a two and uh going out there and trying to run 570 and right. screw it. um you know, we've uh, um, the, the turbo cars in RVW and, and Pro 275 are freaking awesome. The uh, competition is uh, just as tough, sometimes tougher than the pro mod level stuff. Um, and a lot of the same players in there, you know, Salemis, they bounce back and forth. And John and, mm -hmm. and his wife are very, very successful at what they do. And they've got Evan coming up. It's, uh, you know, becoming a name in the pit area uh, and it's fun to see the young the young guys and girls come up through uh, jamie miller boys uh doing very well uh, mm -hmm. but uh yeah i gotta say that the radial stuff is probably my most favorite with the turbos um uh, you know there's there's so much of a different standard operating procedure to stage the car and it doesn't feel like anything else that we've done you know, sure, sure. After two seconds you think this thing's flipping the world over and uh <laughs> you look well, it's not going any faster than what i've been going it's right. just got a charge. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah <clears throat> that was kind of oh. going to be my next question with the radio are you going to run any more more radio stuff i know you teamed up there with uh oh i forget his name uh with Mark. the corvette yeah for a while are you, are you going to do it like you're going to run the rvw stuff at the end of this year yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, Darren Brewitt at BNB Race Cars has got uh, the '69 Camaro that I run at Lights Out for Woody. Uh, Mark had wrecked it at Darlington in 2020, uh, and I was driving the Camaro. And that night, the Camaro caught on fire as well. Uh, the difference wow. being, out was able to race it, continue racing it. 
Um, but uh, no, we're waiting on that car to get done. <clears throat> we're changing the engine programs there a little bit, but uh, all in all, uh, I think that'll be a, a real good force to reckon with in 2022. Yeah, that'll be cool. That'll be cool. Now, I've come up and visited you uh, at Indy. You were nice enough to let us park park the rig at your place, and then we actually did did a painted the project with Brett and them. And the one thing I noticed, is, like everybody knows you around there. So, like, are you from Brownsburg or or the the surrounding area of Indiana? Like, is that born and raised there? Or? Yeah, you're kind yeah. of like the mayor of that place. <laughs> <laughs> now I was born in Danville, Indiana. Uh, there at the hospital, and my business is in Danville. Uh, uh, I graduated from Ben Davis, which is the west side of Indianapolis. My parents graduated from Avon, Indiana, which is the new and upcoming town to drive through. Okay. But now I've been here most of my life. I got you. And I, I noticed you're, you're kind of, you're, you're pretty connected with a lot of the, the fuel teams right there in Brownsburg. And I saw you, uh, you know, being from uh, me being from the Maryland DMV area, Bunny Burkett was always like our, our hero growing up and, and I saw you got to go with little bear and all down here to pick up the car and go race. It. How'd that, how'd that come uh, about? And what, what was that uh, really about? Me and me and Gary Pritch had been friends for quite a while. Um, <clears throat> and he gave me the opportunity, um, you know, Adam and, and uh, Adam cave and uh, Lamont and uh, Gary, they all grew up together. And uh, okay. then trip Tatum is from that Maryland area as well. So we all, I rigged to go over because we thought it was going to be the last time that Bear and uh, Mo were going to get to go racing. And oh, okay. So we worked, we worked our asses off for three days prepping cars. And there's a couple of guys that went to school with, with Gary as well that were there that took care of the car before we got there. But we had to get the rigs to run. And, you know, the, they live in a forest basically. And, uh, there's mold all over the vehicles and everything else. So we worked our asses off and got everything standing tall. And <clears throat> I'd never been to anything like that, but it was like the largest family reunion that I'd ever been to. I mean, people just kept bringing casserole dishes of food out. <clears throat> and we went up to make a pass and uh, it broke a sprag in the transmission and zinged the motor and uh, knocked two rods out of it. Uh, oh, yeah. But I mean, it was a, it was a great time. It, it, it was an experience I've never experienced before. And, uh, you know, just recently they took both funny cars over to ACCO and run them. Uh, I think it was Labor Day and I wasn't able to go at that point. We had too much going on with the new car, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, anytime. So Bunny. No, I was going to say Bunny is definitely a uh, royalty in, in this area. Everybody loved her. And, and if there was, I mean, every event that she came to, you know, around here growing up, it was standing room only when, when she was there. And then when she had the crash years ago, I remember we were, she came to Capitol just to try and sell some t-shirts to try uh, to uh, offset some funds. And the line was out the gate just to buy t-shirts from her. So, uh, yeah, so uh, it's definitely something special to be a part of anything with money. Yeah. No, I'd never been around her when she was alive, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I've got to become real good friends with bear and, uh, Little Bear and I, we run together quite a bit. So it's, uh, it was kind of cool. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So what the, the, I said before about the, the barn, the barn burner, uh, being in the video game, how did that come about? Like, how did, did, did you get approached to, to get that thing, uh, in, in the video game or like, how'd that, how'd that come about? Yeah. Uh, Ron Hamm owns Door Slammers too. And, uh, Ron and Boyd Byers are buddies and, uh, oh. Ron and, about it and Boyd introduced me to him and <clears throat> they drew it up and uh you know it's it's been supplemental in my racing program I mean there's value with it being there and there again if you're a person that likes to keep the youth involved you know it was it's a great situation I had uh, a pair of brothers come up at Memphis two years ago that might have been 10 or 13 and the 13 year old brother is going Mr. My little brother wants one of your t-shirts and I go, okay, they had phones. <clears throat> and uh, I said, well, do you guys play door slammers? Yeah. I said, well, do you own the car on door slammers? No. Well, if you own the car and you show me on your game that you own it, I'll give you a t-shirt. No way. I said, they go, we'll be back. Well, they come back about three hours later and I go, did you beat your mom or your dad up for the money? 
And they go, oh, no, we raced our way in. And they spent three hours racing. Winning. Wow. So I give them a couple of T-shirts apiece, and they both got blower belts and spark plugs and anything else we could load. Mom come back later, and she's gone. How did my kids get all this? And I told her, and I said, yeah. I said, it's a proud parenting moment. And they said, you guys have taught your kids very well. And we appreciate you bringing them back. But now, cool stuff like that keeps you really involved. Yeah, for sure. That's, I mean, that's, and that, you know, to, to, to your testament, that's great marketing. And that's, you know, what a lot of, you, you know, you hear a lot of racers, oh, I just got to have this sponsorship. Or I just got, you know, there's so much work behind the scenes. And, you know, paint, even though it's not painted, which, you know, I'm not happy about that, but the <laughs> fact that you took the time to, to, to do that, like, that's kind of what's missing in, in a lot of racing now. It's, everything's got so business. It's so, you know, straightforward you know, cars don't have names anymore or whatever. And, and it's like, you're a testament that, that that works just as well as having Napa on the side of the car or whatever, you know, you know, so to speak. You know, of course, you, you're not getting a million dollar budget like Napa, but what I'm saying is it still helped and you have a cool car. Yeah. Well, I know Shane Stack that runs Pro 275. He's got Hot Wheels and, and everything else. So it's Monte Carlo. And done very right. well. And, um <clears throat> I've got a new product that we're going to launch probably the end of this month that has to do with, with drag racing. And it's a service that uh, I think is going to change some of the market because it's going to have a, a place for a hero card and, and uh, <clears throat> a way to take a look at, at racing in a different way um, that I'm pretty happy with. And, you know, the, the going out and chasing sponsors is very difficult. I mean, I had uh, a full-time marketing person two years ago, for two years that never brought any money to the table. I've got somebody hired up that, you know, is, is commission-based, so they're highly motivated. Uh, talk to the folks at ADRL. <clears throat> and, you know, if anybody's going to get it done, I think the ADRL guys are going to get it there first because, you know, they want, the cars to have names and personalities and they want things coming out just like wrestling, just like monster yeah. truck. You know, if you're ever fortunate enough to get invited to, to Billy Bader's uh, night of fire, Billy brings you up and I've done it enough that, that Bill senior did. He brings every racer up in the media room and says, this isn't a race. This is entertainment. Don't jack around on my clock. But the beams and go race and you know if we look at it that way it's a lot more fun you know <clears throat> we can we can all go bracket racing for big money and you know we can spot the cheaters and and think we know the cheaters and the cheaters aren't cheating it's the other guys that are cheating and you know it's it really goes backwards on to get more people into the game so yeah I, you know being back, you know, back in the OIHR days, you know, uh, you know, I was a sponsor towards towards the end, and I was able to set in on some, a lot of conversations about what needed to be done. And the one thing I remember the the, the nostalgia Nitro Funny Car guys were there for the last few years, and I proposed to them. I'm like, you know, they're trying to figure out what to do to bring more seats, you know, bring more people in seats. I'm like, well, dude, you guys need to do like long burnouts and dry hops and, you know, just bring the show back. And they're like, well, that's going to mess up the clutch. And that's, you know, we're trying to win a championship. And I'm like, you're not going to have a championship to race for if there's nobody in the stands. So it's like, they just didn't get it. You know, it's, it's all gotten so, you know, we're racing for a championship, but you, you got to put on a show and that's what's missing out of a lot of drag racing now. So that's, that's good to hear that Bader does that and you're involved in it. Yeah. The, you know, and when you look at it, when you go to a big dollar bracket race, how entertaining is the announcer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A couple that are, but yep. you're announcing the same thing all the time. And if you go back and you look at, um, all the promoter that was out of Alabama, uh, uh yeah. Uh, had this, um, and his name's on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Cannon and them guys run pro mods with them. But anyway, you know, you went there to go run for 10 grand at the bracket race, and there were eight pro mods there that were racing. George Howard is who it is. George Howard, yep, yep. George George had a 
had some badass shit going on back in the day. And yeah, I, I've said something to a couple of promoters about, you know, you don't have a gate. So why not book a show gate? Well, I don't know. It's not model. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I don't know what logistically what the numbers would be, but surely you get quite a few people to show up for six, eight, ten pro mods to show up. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know the, the whole state of drag racing. You know, it's not in a bad state, but it just is. You know, we're at a time where it could go either way. We could we could make it right by doing some changes and bringing the fun back, or keep doing what we're doing. And <laughs> I don't think that's working perfectly. It's working, but you know. But uh, hey, Pete, uh, Chris, you guys fall asleep back there? Or are, are we warning no. you that much? Actually, I had a couple of things that I wanted to say, but you wouldn't shut up. So I just figured I'd wait till you ran out of air. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm full of a lot of hot air. <laughs> so, Craig, out of complete coincidence, as soon as you mentioned Billy Lieber's name, he messaged me about a carburetor question. Uh, so I said to him, hey, do you know Craig Sullivan? And he goes, yeah, I hooked him up with a place uh, to for the plug for his 53. Uh, he came up to my house. We went out to dinner. We went to the titty bar. I like the guy, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one little piece of completely <laughs> useless info. Uh, Bunny Burkett is the reason why they have a speck hole in the side of the Lexan the, the window. Yep. Did you know that? Because she used yeah. to make the hole a rabbit. Shaped like a, like shaped shaped like like a bunny. bunny. Yep. Yep. And one time she was on fire and the fire extinguisher nozzle wouldn't fit in because the bunny was too small. So because of that, they made a speck size hole so that they could put the fire hose in. Hmm. That's all I got, guys. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, how about put, how about putting a second mag on that and pouring some nitro in the tank once you get it sorted out? Well, it's you know me and Scott Palmer are real good buddies, and there's a whole lot more than that. Uh, they're making a top fuel pro mod. Uh, you know, there's no suspension on the back of Scott's cars. It's it's a hard, uh, just like a funny car would be. I mean, basically, he's got a funny car with doors. Right. <clears throat> you know, he's he's got on and they had a paid event that they went to out in Kansas, maybe. But uh yeah, I see that there's a place for that, but you know, you gotta look at that thing's it's probably ten grand every lap you make in that thing. Right. And you know, the cool part is is it blows flames out and it rotates the earth, but how are we going to get people to pay us for that? <laughs> Rotate your wallet too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Pete, Pete, that's that's close to what it costs to run your car every lap. Isn't it? It's close. Yeah, yeah, it's close. I'm not not quite ten grand or <laughs> ten hundred or ten dollars. Yeah, we're close. <laughs> there is a dollar sign involved. <laughs> How about it, Jazz? You want to jump in on this conversation? Man, if I if my car is ten thousand dollars every pass, I would be yeah, playing ball. No. I don't think I've spent ten thousand dollars running my car since I built it. <laughs> oh, no. I think I've definitely spent ten thousand dollars, but I don't want to spend it again. <laughs> right? Oh man! I just okay. uh, Chris just sent me a picture of your car. Oh, I'm glad you said shit already, so you broke the ice. But holy shit, what an amazing looking car! That thing is bad to the bone. Now, it's, Craig, you haven't you haven't showed anybody, or like it's still kind of under wraps, right? Technically yeah. and and literally under wraps. Yeah, yeah, that won't <laughs> that won't be shared. Trust me. <laughs> other than other than to him. The uh, yeah, we're going to debut the the car at uh, the NMCA NMRA race in Martin, Michigan, the twenty second to the twenty fifth of this month. That'll be the okay. official. Uh, okay. And uh, there'll be lots of pictures launched from every direction. Uh, when we were at, um, Mark goes, Craig, I want to take this downtown Fayetteville. And we done a photo shoot in the old portion of Fayetteville 
that Mark and Allie were the photographers. And, uh, you know, you talk about a jack of all trades between his cattle farm and uh, his horse racing. He, they breed horses to, to race, to playing guitar, to uh, astrology stuff. I mean, Mark Mentzer is brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is a great guy for sure. But they, they had a great photo shoot down in Fayetteville. And uh, now the, the car will be launched here at the end of the month. And uh, there's, there's plenty out there. And I couldn't, I couldn't have got it done without, you know, the guys that have backed me for a long time in the racing environment. I mean, my manufacturer really helped us a lot. <clears throat> We're starting our seventh year of racing pro mod. We're just dumb bracket racers. We didn't know anything about heads up racing, you know, a little bit of super stock stuff, but um yeah there's there's a lot there and, and i've been i'm very thankful for the the help so very cool All craig right. if i get someone that wants to pay money to see the picture i just saw what's the what's the going rate how much should i get <clears throat> not a not a <laughs> not even right, well, grand for a lap <laughs> well well okay pete g- give me a hundred bucks for the if you show the picture then i'll make some money off this deal <laughs> no i didn't know the picture wasn't released yet no one will see it on my dime i'll tell you that right yeah no <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, keep it under wraps yeah, yeah. in yeah. fairness all i saw was the back quarter panel so i could kind of get the gist of what it's going to look like but good lord people are going to love it yeah, they, uh, you know, another story that come out of the new car, um, you know, Chris Davis that owns Kryptonite, he he really hit the mat when he done the barn burn. I mean, he had done some exotic cars before and, and some stuff that really stuck out, but that was kind of his keystone. Well, this car was the last car that he's going to do. He uh, <clears throat> has sold his business to Jake Lago. Uh, which is the lead designer there at Kryptonite Customs. So uh, running around enjoying uh, retirement now for the last two or three weeks. So that's cool. It's a it's a it's a tough job working those squeegees. I didn't mean it that way. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, very cool. Well, Craig, I'm glad you got chance to come on and hang out with us we appreciate it like i said you know you've got a couple of beautiful cars i remember seeing you know the the barn burner the or the first car when it made its debut and it was 2017 at pri correct i believe so i believe so so you know hell of a job with how you guys did that you know the setup you had at the show and it just you know fit the car to a t and um you know this thing's gonna set the world on its ear i do believe that yeah craig thanks for thanks for coming on i was i was a little worried you had me shaking in my boots earlier but i know how it is uh at the fourth <laughs> july weekend all right well i appreciate it and i'm sorry for being late but uh right. any- no worries craig thanks for coming uh, out buddy you're fine all appreciate right. it but I'll, I'll be in touch take care have a good one guys all right have a good night craig thank you very much buddy yep yeah, that thing's going to be unbelievable when it debuts. Wow. So well, I'll have to uh, send Jasmine a, a, a firm request on Facebook so I can see the helmet closer. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Uh... He might be able to teach you a thing or two about dot 90 racing, you know. Maybe. Probably not, but maybe. Probably not. I don't know, Jazz. Think you can school him a little bit? Uh, I don't know. I think I need a little bit more practice and some dot ninety racing. Yeah, so it's all good. There you go. So before we wrap it up for tonight, one of my favorite things to do is a poll question. I haven't done one in a while, probably a month or so, but it's an incredibly simple question. I'll run it around to the three of you, and then we'll we'll get to the results. A very simple question. You are all fans of racing or racers yourself. Do you still enjoy it? Pete? 100%. 110%. 110%. Jazz? Yes. Jaron? I'm trying to quit every day. No. <laughs> no, I still, I, uh, I still love it. I mean, it's, 
it's at times it's overwhelming, but right. uh, I still love it. Yeah. All right. So the number one vote getter was hell yes. I eat, sleep, and breathe drag racing with 193 votes. It's still fun, but needs some changes. 82 votes, which is probably going to lead me into the next question. I want to know what they are. Division races, yes, 40 votes. Stock, Super Stock Association races are the bomb, somebody added, 25 votes. National events are okay if they are close by, 11 votes. <clears throat> Somebody added, in a, re in a relationship with racing, it's complicated, 10 votes. <laughs> Former racer, now retired, eight votes. Big money races, yes, six votes. All right, so let's go with the big, the big money races. Let's go around to the three of you. Pete, yay or nay? So... I'm going to say yay, because uh, I think it's cool. But when you guys are done answering, I want to elaborate a little bit on the second choice. Okay. Jazz, big money races. Yay. Yay? Because big money races. Why not? <laughs> You're on? Um, yay, just for, I can't say no, because that's where I started. Big bracket racing, but I don't do much of it any well any of it anymore. I'm strictly NHRA, uh, yeah. core whatever. But uh, yeah, it's it, yeah. Why not? I'd like to see uh, different lengths, but we all know that's where I'm at. I think it should be eighth mile, thousand foot, quarter mile, all of it. Let's have three different you know ones, not just every race eighth mile. Okay. I'm gonna get in trouble for that one. Take it. So. One of the things that puzzles me a little bit about the second choice is, in my opinion, there's endless variety of the kind of racing that you could do. So when someone says, yes, but, it, you know, some things need to change, well, what? If you're racing divisionals and you don't like the fact that it takes three days uh, go bracket racing where you can get all your racing in on Sunday. Uh, if you don't like, uh, if you don't think the payouts are high enough for divisionals or bracket racing, go big money racing. Uh, if you don't like uh, putting a dial in, you could go heads up racing. You could do pretty much whatever the frig your wallet allows you. So I, I'm not quite sure when someone says yes, but some things need to change. Well, I mean, you could race for a trophy. You could win for, you could race for a million dollars. You could race over a course of five days. You could do three races in two days. I mean, you know, you could go a long track. You could go a short track. You could, I don't understand what people would change. I, I just, I don't get it. Pete, Pete, you already know where that comes from. Go ahead. Tell me. It, it comes from drag racers just want to bitch about something. <laughs> because, exactly. because to be honest with you, drag racing is one of the only motorsports, probably the only motorsports that has that plethora of right. grudge racing, donk racing, diesel yeah, truck racing. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you know, want whatever, to see right? Caprices with 26s on it. Exactly. We got a show for you. Right. right? You uh, want to see cars. Short fat yeah. people in Vega wagons. Come on down. We got that too. I mean, it's it's yeah. anything you saying. want. You yeah, can so get. I, I don't understand. That's All one that of the things that drive me crazy about when people are talking about national events. And oh, this sucks and that sucks. And and my answer is always at any given time during a national event, they run seven, eight, nine classes, right? We don't expect people to come through the gate, glue themselves to the fence, and watch all nine classes, okay? Jerron loves the big wheelies and super stock, okay? Jasmine loves watching 890 at the finish line. Chris thinks Hot Fuel is the best in the world, and I love stock. So why, why do we have to criticize the one we don't like? some point, everyone has to pee and eat a cheeseburger. So watch the class that you love 
And the one that you don't, why, you know, stock, they all look the same. Well, don't watch it. Watch super stock because that's what you're there for. Who cares? It's that's you hit the on the head drops. Someone's always piss and moan about something. Yeah. It's just human nature. That, and that's that's one of the things that I've tried to, you know, tell people too when you when you hear about all the, you know, complaining about NHR or this or that or whatever, is you know, with all of that diversity with all those different classes, right? The one thing that makes anybody sound crazy about not liking something or or you know, hating this is that I don't care what you race other than a jet car, you pull to the same through the same water box stage with the same tree and go down the same track as everybody else it right. doesn't matter what you're doing so you're not doing anything special more special than anybody else right like, even a jet car goes through the water box there's just no water in it yeah. <laughs> just, they dry it out yeah exactly they dry it out yeah but yeah, yeah so i just don't that. Yeah. i just no, it, it's so frustrating for people that love the sport to, to watch people say stuff like that. And I mean, it, again, not that I don't want to go off on a tangent about this whole electric car thing, but electric cars in, in our lifetime, electric cars are never going to replace piston driven engines. It's never going to happen. But if you have the techie geeks that the electric stuff interests, and you have another potential fan base to introduce to the sport because of the electric cars, why is your 70-year-old ass fighting it so much? You got to know that after all the 60 and 70-year-olds are gone, we got to replace you with something. With something, exactly. And you're not going to have a 20-year-old or a 15-year-old come out of a junior dragster and act like a 70-year-old stock eliminator driver. So, you know, at some point, it's got to turn over. And I don't think this sport should be saying no to any specific group, category, or technology. I, I just don't see it. I'll never drive an electric car. Right? I have no desire to own it. Would I sit there and watch one go down the track? Hell yeah. If I'm bored with it, the next one that goes down, I'll go get a cheeseburger. But I think they have just as much right to be there as anybody else. I, I put that up on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. About when um, went Jason, over great too. <laughs> oh, it was it was lovely. Conversation. And I shared it to another page too, but we'll talk about that another day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I can tell you how what incredibly amazing that conversation went as well. I put that up the next night. Somebody posted a picture of a Tesla SUV going down the track. And they said they were shocked at how fast it really was. Yeah. I mean, it, again, it's technology. It's no different than, than me putting fuel injection on my car. You know, all the car, oh, my God, you're crazy. Carburetor, you're nuts, blah, blah, blah. But And maybe I am, but it, it's something. It's a right. We're trying to do something. It's technology. And I don't, I don't think if you're happy with your program, keep running it. But I don't think anyone should be commenting on someone else's program just for trying something new or different, right? Don yeah, Garlitz yeah. put a motor in the back of a dragster. I think it was Don Garlitz, right? They, yeah, yeah, because he was tired of getting his feet blown off. Now, were, were people walking around saying, oh, you're freaking crazy, that'll never work? Probably. Absolutely. Yeah, well, Probably, yeah they were. Right? Yep. Um, I remember reading the Daryl Gwynn story. Um. He had a brand new car built, worked like garbage. Couldn't get the thing to go down to the track. Brought it to Don Garland's shop. Don took out the saws off and started cutting uprights out of it. And Daryl Gwynn's like, oh, my God, you're cutting up my brand new car? And he got it in the car and went right down Broadway. So it, it's, you know what I'm saying? People are pioneers and things are going to change and there's going to be new pioneers. And I don't think we should be discouraging them. No, for it's sure. It, very it goes back to what even oh sorry, John. Give me just one sec. No, you're when fine. Garlitz put the turbine in the dragster. Oh, that I didn't know about. Yep. He's he put it and he ran it like three races and didn't was it just was a disaster. Is that he had, right? He had a turbine in a rear engine turbine 
top fuel drag. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like the it was a blue Kendall car that he. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was blue and white and had the Kendall yeah. sponsorship on it. Um, but I remember seeing that um, in the museum and then reading up on it. And he said, "I didn't know. When I wanted to try it. It sucked. Now it's sitting in the museum." Right. Right. So. But we're gonna we'll dive into this, but needs more changes stuff. Let me wrap this up real quick, and then Jerron, you can go ahead. Uh, former alcohol crew member now retired, five votes. Well, I guess so, three votes. Now we have some comments. Comments are pretty funny. I'll go ahead. The best ones in there. Uh, looking forward to retiring and not racing anymore. One vote. Olga Prezer. Everybody loves Olga, especially Pete. Racing She's, and. Um... Uh -huh. She's the best. Huh? Racing is part of my marriage agreement. Also, Olga, <laughs> our wedding date was during a non-racing season. Both of our girls were born in the off-season. My husband plans everything. <laughs> yeah, that you know, is so true. Richie! You know, I hope I didn't kill his name. Uh, still love going out racing, uh, mostly just test and tune just for fun. Uh, Brandon Welch, sportsman racer here, considering double duty or faster cars classes next year. And last but not least, I'll read it just because it's there. Joe Cabala, uh, NHRA will be defunct in 10 years. Yeah, there's always that guy. I, I guess when the last 10 years didn't work out, you just bump it up another 10 years, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the the, the end is near. Yeah. Al Gore had us all melted by now, so I guess anything we get's a bonus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I mean, they they may they're not going to go anywhere. They may completely fall flat on their face. Them and NASCAR at some point in time, but they're not going to fall off the face of the planet. Listen, know, they, like, might, they might need a restructuring. Uh, something big might happen. They might you know, sell off the pros and separate the pros and the sportsmen. We don't know what's going to happen. But one thing, in my opinion, we shouldn't be doing is bitching about what we got now. Um, you know, I've, you guys have heard me say it on this show a hundred times. You piss and moan about the only sandbox we got. And then when they take that sandbox away, we'll be the first one to piss and moan that it's not there anymore. A.K.A. English Town and unfortunately, probably A.K.A. Echo. Right. Oh, English Town. The pits are falling apart. Uh, this sucks and no traction. Now that it's gone, we're all sitting here with crying pals. Uh, you know, it, it's sooner or later, we all have to smarten up as a group and try and be constructive, try and help instead of just piss and moan. Um, because eventually people are going to get tired of hearing the pissing and moaning and take their ball and go home. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, one thing I've always said, too, you know, uh, getting back to, like, we're all taking the same tree, same water boxes, we need to unite. I mean, it's it's not, we're not going to help, you know, the super gas guys hate the, you know, the stock, stock guys or whatever. <laughs> I know, you know, it makes I know. no sense. Like, you know, why? But uh, Listen, the, yeah. the only thing that I like to make fun of is the stockers that warm up at 530 in the morning. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Other than yeah. that, that's the only thing that I make fun of, and that's just because it's funny. Now, see, I I, I used to make a lot of fun of like we we everybody that's raced NHRA is, is or even ITRA for that matter has made fun of the stalkers. But going to Indy last year for the first time, I I, I was a stalker. Like that sucked. I was they called us to the lane super comp at six twenty a.m. So oh I was warming God. up. Yeah. So I, when I were the stalker, the when were the stalkers going the night before? <laughs> I got to the track at 5:45, and they they had already called stock. And that had to hurt for you to get anywhere that early. <laughs> you know that. I, I, yeah, I ran, I ran fourth round at Indy at 7:12 a.m. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's fourth that's round at 7:12. Yep. <laughs> Good lord. So yeah, so I try not to make fun of the stalkers anymore. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Unreal. There was a video of uh I think it was Jim Baudreau uh two years ago at Indy and he was warming his car up and it was like four thirty in the morning and huh. they had they had made the call, yeah. <laughs> that is bizarre. 
Now, was that weather induced, Jaron, or just that's their schedule? No, that's normally the, the schedule in Indy. Um, we hadn't got any weather to that point. We got weather later on because, so like I ran fourth and fifth round before 8 a.m. Like I ran two rounds back to back. By 7.40, I was done with fourth and fifth round. And then we got weather and I didn't run the semis until like eight o'clock that night or whatever. So it was like a 12 hour stretch of nothing. Could you imagine me telling my wife, honey, you got to wake me up at four o'clock in the morning so I can warm my car up <laughs> no, for no, five? No, you got to wake yourself up at four o'clock in the morning. Good. Well, yeah, listen, exactly. quick, quick story about that. So Tim Simmons, who is a blower guy for Leah Pritchett, uh, last year he worked for John Force. John Force didn't race last year. So he was like, Look, I'm here at Indy. I'll just I'll help you this weekend. So he was my my crew guy. Did my tires, everything, whatever. Yeah. So uh, I was picking him up on. I'd leave the hotel and pick him up in the mornings, and he ride with me to track, whatever, blah blah blah. So at night I take him back. So I was like, look, uh, I'm not gonna want to get up tomorrow morning. So you're gonna have to make sure I get up. He's like, no problem. <laughs> so I, my alarm went off at like 5 a.m. and I literally said, no, I'm just gonna forfeit this round. Like I'm done. I'm not racing. I'm not getting up. <laughs> I I mean, you know me, I don't want to get up. I don't want to get up for work. I don't race. What? Fifth round at Indy. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> so I literally said that, and I went back to sleep. So he called me, and I, I looked at the phone. I was like, oh, let me answer it. It's like, hey, Tim. He's like, are you ready? I was like, dude, I'm I'm not racing this. I'm done. I, I'll just, they'll go without me. I, you know, I'm, I, I can't. I can't. It's too early. And he's like, are you freaking crazy? You're down to like ten cars at Indy, and you're good for some slip. Oh, and he would he freaking cussed me up. I was like, all right, all right. So I ended up getting up. So he's the only reason that I went to the finals in Indy last year because I was ready to just get up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much I don't want to get up. You should you should have made that part of your poll question, Chris. <laughs> What time will you get up to go race yeah. five round at Indy? Do you love racing <laughs> only between 10 and 8? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this year at the at the Vegas National, Jennifer, my, my car owner, uh, it was about 8 o'clock, and she called me, and she's like, hey, Jerron. I was like, hey, Jen. She's like, what you doing? I said, uh, get ready to jump in the shower and head to the track. She was like, they've already called your class. I was like, what? Well, I didn't realize that there's no Super Street at the National, so it's stocked in Super Comp. So I'm thinking I still got time. I'm like, oh, geez. So she's like, all right, we'll get here. I was, she's like, what are you going to do? I was like, I'm going to jump in the shower. She's like, you don't have time to take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so that's – I really, like, everybody's like, oh, you're – you know, you don't want to get up to go to work. No, I don't want to get up to do anything. I don't want to uh, yes. race. Yes, not <laughs> it's not just work. Trust me. It's racing, too. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it seems like on the west coast they start a little bit earlier like i'm kind of like Vandermeer is our next national and next week and i don't think they start till like 10 so i'm i'm pretty happy about you're that. good you get to sleep in yeah and do they have super street you know what i don't know i don't think so no there's no, no <laughs> oh, there. yeah. if they got super street you're golden dude yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> everyone well, will be eating what... everyone will be eating lunch john will be looking for his rice krispies <laughs> Well, that's that's one of the reasons I'm I'm kind of looking forward to running top tracks at the end of the year because it's later in the in the schedule. I can, yeah, I can, yeah. I can't have to get up yeah, until like eleven o'clock. Like exactly. Spend twenty well, grand more on a motor just so he doesn't he can wake up two hours later. <laughs> back in back in the IHRA days when I ran top tracks, I literally wouldn't even get up until eleven o'clock because top tracks was last. In, in the IHRA order years ago. So it was great. Like, I, the trailer would be locked up closed. Everybody's like, where the heck's everybody at? Oh, they were on top drag, so they ain't getting up for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Freddie runs top drags during top sportsman. Yeah, it's pretty late in the, in, the, in the schedule. There we go. All right, guys. So what do you think? We had enough fun for tonight? All is well. Cool. I'm gonna get to fast forward through all my quite all my uh, commercials of there you go yeah America's less so I'm happy so you can stay up <laughs> past nine fifteen yeah right that's the other problem <laughs> <laughs> well I will see you guys from Florida next week I am flying out tomorrow morning back to Florida 
Cool. And then uh, probably do the following show from Denver on Monday after the national. I think Excellent. I yeah. Our flying yeah. host. <laughs> yep, the flying airbrush yeah. and the flying host. Flying airbrush, turns, just turn your hat around, right? I know, yeah. <laughs> now, I know get for... Bucket, get him a bucket hat. So yeah, right. Flying airbrush on one side <laughs> yeah. and on the back. Turn it right around. <laughs> and I, I know for Pomona, my flight's pretty late. I don't think I leave until like 7 o'clock Monday night, so we'll definitely do a show from Pomona. Cool. I like it. I like it. Right. So joining us next week on the 12th is going to be Joe Costello from WFO Radio and also from uh, NHRA broad, live broadcast from the national events. Um, so looking forward to that. Jerron, thank you for coming on, hanging out. Jazz, thank you very much. Appreciate no problem. It. it was fun. I hope you had a good time. Where can you get at this kind of excitement, right? <laughs> It's always the shows that are all screwed up in a mess turned out to be the best. That turned out to be awesome, yeah. Craig yeah, Sullivan, sure. thank you very much for coming on and hanging out. Um, we don't know where, where Scott was, but that's okay. We, we managed to power through. Yeah. Somebody somebody stole his wheel chalk. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have twice the making fun of next week, so it'll be perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah revenge, revenge is best served twice. Hey, you got that right. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot for having me. Thank you very much again, Jazz. Thank you very much, Craig thank Sullivan. You. Thank you. Jasmine, thanks for jumping in, kiddo. We appreciate it. No problem. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. Have a great night, everybody. We will close it out with a little something like this. Scotty Wheels Racing is a veteran-owned and operated company that specializes in performance parts, installation, and tuning. They can build and design your chassis right at their shop in Hamden, Connecticut. They offer track and remote tuning for your electronic fuel injection and chassis. They are your one-stop shop, including brakes and suspension, chassis, engine parts, fuel systems, turbos, and accessory. They not only sell it, they race it on their own in-house race car. Be sure to check out their website at www.scottywheels.com or give them a call at 203-500-5995. All right, like I said, thank you, Jerron. Thank you, uh, Craig Sullivan. Thank you, Jasmine Weeder. Pete, as always, thank you very much. And if you guys are racing this coming weekend, have a great weekend. Stay safe. And we will be back next Monday night with Joe Costello from WFO Radio and NHRA. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great night.